Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing some of the new and relatively major updates coming from our neighbor, Mars, and also its partner, Phobos, with some of these new observations being the first ever made, helping us discover something new about Mars, something we didn't really know before. And let's start with the biggest discovery of the last few weeks, the biggest news. A new crater, although maybe not this big. Here is the visual simulation of what the scientists believe this crater looks like. And this is actually something that was just created on Mars and is less than one year old. But more importantly, this was actually heard and detected by the Martian mission, with the collision being so powerful that it created something referred to as the surface waves, with this new paper describing them and analyzing them in more detail. And these waves have never been seen before on Mars because we've never really detected anything as powerful as what created this relatively large crater in December of 2021. Here is actually the before and after picture which shows us something really important about Mars. Because of the relatively low atmospheric pressure that's less than 1% the pressure on planet Earth, the resulting debris from the explosion spreads here over really large distances. So if this is only 150 meters or approximately 500 feet, you can see that the debris here spread across several kilometers across. With all of these pieces very likely moving extremely fast, so if, hypothetically, there was some kind of a Martian base here, created by future Martian colonists that were going to be sent in there, and they would actually be in trouble right now. That debris was moving really fast and was quite destructive. But because the inside lander was the one responsible for recording all of these sounds here, we now even get to hear what all of this sounded like, and you can hear it right now. with the resulting crater being at least 10 times larger than any previous detection in the last few decades. And luckily for us, the inside probe still had enough power to hear all of this, because as you might have heard already, the inside probe is about to be shut down and is no longer going to be operating, mostly because it's losing way too much power and is unable to recharge itself due to huge amount of dust accumulated here over the period of several years. You can kind of see how extreme this is in this particular image. But we got lucky enough to catch this particular meteorite collision, along with approximately 1300 different Mars quakes that allowed the scientists to discover what happens inside the planet, with some of these discoveries discussed in the video you can find in the description. And interestingly, one of the discoveries coming from the inside in the last few weeks was in regards to these earthquakes very likely being caused by some kind of an underground magma activity, suggesting that Mars is still volcanically active. A lot of this was detected near this feature that you see right here, known as Cerberus Fossa. And all of this seems to be caused by some kind of an underground magma activity, which implies that Mars is not as dead as we thought it was. But we'll discuss this in some of the future videos as more geology data comes out and becomes available. But something else was discovered during this meteorite collision by exploring some of the debris that landed around the crater. The scientists discovered a huge chunk of water ice that was thrown off from within the planet and landed on the surface around the crater. And because in this case this is actually around the equator of the planet where the scientists one day would like to land, because this is one of the preferred locations for a future crewed mission, it of course suggests that underneath the ground, even just a little bit below the surface, there does seem to be a huge deposit of actual water, ice water that's visible right here. And so definitely great news for any potential crewed mission that one day might land somewhere nearby. Although obviously they'll have to find a way to protect themselves from a lot of these collisions that do happen here at least once in a while. But there were some other intriguing detections in terms of sound coming from another mission. The Mars Perseverance rover that just happens to have two separate microphones that are always active and always listening and in this case they were able to record a few things about Mars that we kind of knew but not really well. You can find all of these recordings from Perseverance in the link in the description, including the sounds of a slightly smaller meteoroid hitting the planet, but it's really the recordings of things like the wind, the sounds of wheels driving across Mars, or even the sounds of the helicopter as it tries to take off close to the rover that help us understand subtle differences about the sound propagation on the surface of this planet. And because of the differences in the atmosphere, with the atmosphere here being much thinner, but also basically made entirely out of CO2, 
the resulting frequencies are very different. Unlike Earth's atmosphere that's mostly nitrogen and some oxygen, the Martian CO2 atmosphere tends to absorb all of the high-pitched sounds and only tend to propagate much lower sounds, while also making them sound much more deep. For example, here is the sound of the wind and the sound of the Martian wheels or the sound of the flying helicopter. And to me personally, this almost sounds like it's underwater. Interestingly, it does propagate much farther compared to planet Earth, similarly to how sound propagates underwater. And so overall, it definitely sounds extremely eerie. But also because the atmosphere is much thinner, you do have to produce a much louder sound for someone to hear you even relatively close. So even the strike of the meteorite that created this crater would not really be as super loud as it would be on planet Earth because of the thinness of the atmosphere on Mars. And the waves detected by the inside mission were actually the surface waves from the crust of the planet, not from the atmosphere. And so in that sense, those sounds were very different. Still, interesting discoveries, and actually kind of relate to a much older video where I tried to simulate what it might sound like if you did scream on Mars. Check out the video in the description. And now that we've basically seen Mars, we've heard Mars, and to some extent we've touched Mars by touching various Martian meteorites, it's about time we also smelled and maybe tasted Mars, right? Eh, okay, maybe not. Anyway, moving on to the next part, and it's actually also related to the Perseverance rover and to the helicopter. And here it's a mystery of this unusual debris that both the helicopter and the rover seem to be struggling with. During the recent 33rd flight, something was attached to one of the wheels of the helicopter, something that you can see right there. But it also detached itself before the helicopter landed. But what exactly is this weird piece of debris? Well, these limited images don't really show us much, but not so long ago, something else was detected in the sampling tube of the Perseverance rover that's collecting rocks right now. And you can sort of see it right there. Almost looks like some kind of a hair. And does seem to resemble that material that was attached to the helicopter. Spoiler alert, they probably have the same origin. And another spoiler alert, not alien or unusual in origin at all. As a matter of fact, if we go back a few months, there was another image taken on July 12th of 2022 of a stream-like object that was actually moving around the surface, disturbed by the wind. And so it's extremely likely and almost certain that all of these are related. But what is it and where did it come from? Well, you have to remember that when it came to landing, this was an extremely complex mission involving a parachute and also involving a heat shield, both of which contained quite a lot of fabric that separated and spread across the surface not so far from the landing site. And it's quite likely that a lot of this fabric and a lot of these pieces and various strings eventually spread by the Martian wind, eventually making their way to the rover and to the helicopter and also being attached to them in the process. Which I guess is a little bit disturbing because it means that we kind of contaminated a relatively large surface of Mars with all of these fabrics and all of these tiny pieces of everything. And at the moment we don't really know what effects this is going to have on Mars. But all of this may be even causing some future problems to these missions if, for example, some of these hairs get stuck inside the samples or even attach themselves to moving parts inside the rover or the helicopter and prevent them from working completely. Hopefully it doesn't happen, but it's a clear sign that the future missions will have to redesign some of the components and make them a little bit safer. The alternative explanation is that there is a cat on Mars hiding from the view and spraying the hair. But it's obviously not the first time the rover has to deal with some kind of an issue, with the previous issue being pebbles. But this was solved initially. However, there is a new issue with the sampling tube, with the sample for some reason being stuck and being unable to be inserted inside for some unknown reasons. So at least for now, the sample is uncapped and is not sealed inside, but I'm pretty sure the engineers will work it out in the next few days. And then we also have some new updates coming from the Martian partner from its moon Phobos. And as you probably know, Mars actually has two moons, Phobos and Deimos. Now, Phobos is particularly interesting because the scientists believe that one day it might become some kind of a ring formation around Mars. But what's unknown about Phobos and Deimos is where exactly did they come from? Were they actually just captured asteroids? Or, as a lot of other studies have implied, were they produced along with Mars? Or possibly were created as a result of an ancient collision? And this is where ESA's Mars's instrument, on top of Mars Express, might actually help us answer some of these questions. This instrument is designed to use its radar to actually peer just below the surface, discovering what's hiding underneath. 
and this is the instrument that discovered various types of water on Mars underneath the ground, while also discovering a few other features that we still don't really understand. All of this is actually done using this 40 meter long antenna that you see here that uses low frequency radio waves and reflects them from the surface seeing if there's any interference underneath. And normally this was designed to work from a distance of at least 250 kilometers, but the recent software update decreased the distance dramatically, allowing the scientists to peer into Phobos as Mars Express flew nearby at a distance of just 80 kilometers, which allowed the scientists to reflect the signals and to scan into the surface of Phobos, discovering a few unusual subsurface reflections whose origins are currently unknown, but will probably allow us to understand how this particular object was formed after all. And so there's definitely a sign of some kind of a subsurface structure, very likely containing different materials. Unclear what it's made out of just yet, but the scientists are hoping to do another flyby in a couple of years, at an even closer distance of just 40 kilometers, which will help them analyze this even more, and potentially discover what's underneath the surface. And obviously once we know what's underneath, the scientists might be able to come up with an explanation for how these objects were formed. And then in 2027, there's actually going to be a Japanese mission that's going to try to collect some of the samples from Phobos, bring them back to Earth, and so by around 2030, we'll probably know so much more about this rock and understand its exact origins. But at the moment, we don't really know what's happening there. But anyway, at least for now, these are some of the more major discoveries coming from Mars in the last few weeks slash months. But we're also going to be discussing some of the new discoveries and achievements from Perseverance and Ingenuity in the next few weeks as well. So make sure to subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt that features the Martian mission and the Martian helicopter on one of the designs. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.